Hello everyone and welcome to another painting video. In this one I'm going to be tackling a Eutoraptor from Drowned Earth. And I've never painted anything from Drowned Earth before. I've never painted a, a dinosaur before, so hitting two birds with one stone in this one. Um, this one's interesting because I usually Zenith stuff with the airbrush when I'm priming, uh, but I haven't this time around and you'll see why I get to play a bit more with inks and shades and stuff like that uh, with just a, a couple of basic uh, sort of colours put down first. Apart from that, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and I hope you will be too, so let's get stuck in. So to start on our Eutoraptor, uh, I've airbrush primed it in black, so I've done my Stinyl Res, my usual airbrush priming. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, zenithing this because I'm just going to be working with more top colours rather than zenithing this time around. So the first thing to do is to base coat the whole model, and for that we're going to be airbrushing some Morgast bone uh, from Citadel. Now this has been thinned about 3 to 1 to make it run through the airbrush uh, happily, so we're just going to be giving this a good solid coat of uh, Morgast bone. We're going to be focusing particularly on the underside because it's going to be the main colour for the belly of our raptor. Once the Morgast bone is down, we're going to be doing something a little bit odd and a little bit counterintuitive here, but we're going to be using uh, Pterodon Turquoise uh, through the airbrush. So this isn't thin, this has been put neat and I've dropped the pressure uh, in the airbrush. So the reason I'm doing this is I want to make some modelled patterning on the tail and the back of the body and I've kind of figured that the harder, because uh, contrast paint is fairly transparent, the harder it goes, particularly with the Pterodon Turquoise, the longer you hang with it, the darker certain parts become. So what I've done is modelled a little bit using this uh, sort of turquoise colour to give me that sort of pre-modelled look before I go in and um, start to mask it off. So we just need to let this dry for a little bit and then we can start the masking process and after that we can then get on with the next colour which will cover up most of what we've done here with the turquoise. I've basically put it down so that I have something underneath that has a bit of texture, a bit of pattern to it before continuing on to do uh, the other stuff. So we'll let it dry and then when we come back we'll mask it and then get our next colour down. So as you can see, I've begun the masking process. I'm just using some blue tack uh, just to mark out areas that I want to retain uh, the bottom layer of color before moving on. So how I'm masking it, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna do one of these stripes here. I'm gonna see if I can get a few more done relatively quickly here. So just get a little bit of my blue tack and roll it and tease it and pull it until it's roughly equal equal shape on both ends. So something like that, more or less, and that's how I'm going to be making the stripes. So for the stripes, it's just a case of, I think this one, if I can roll it out a bit further and lay it across this piece that I have that's going up the tail. And then it's just a matter of placing it and pressing it down, not too firmly because we don't want to flatten the shape out too much, just a little bit. And it's a case of just doing that, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Now, on his tail, we don't really have enough room to do that, so what I'm going to try... is just pull the blue tag out a little bit on both sides. Just 
just using the back of a knife here. Now these probably aren't going to be as sharp as I'd like. But they should continue the pattern on further up the tail. I also know there's going to be a few comments of um, why did you use contrast paint when you can use ink? Uh, yes, you can absolutely use ink. I wanted to use the contrast because I'd never done it before. <laughs> I'd never stuck it through an airbrush. I've seen others do it and I was curious myself to see if there was any sort of practical use for it through an airbrush and I think it, it's worked out okay so far. I mean, we'll not really know until I have the next colour down just how useful using contrast was over an ink. I do have a step that's going to involve some ink. So let's see if we can get just maybe just a couple more. I think out to there ought to do it on the tail. Okay. Now, at this point, it's ready for the next layer of paint. And as my compressor kicks in, what we're going for is Vallejo model color flat green. So a bit of a brighter green. And as long as it's ready, which it is, we're going to be putting it top down, more or less top down. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Right, so that is the green down. I think we can start to remove our masking. So let's let's just see if it works, all right? Let's just go for it. You also notice I put a load of blue tack underneath to protect that um, initial color, the Morgas bone. So let's see if my modeling idea has worked or if it's just made a horrific mess and just not making any sense. Oh, actually. Oh, hey, that's not bad. That is certainly not bad. If I sound surprised, it's because I am. <laughs> I don't want to see, I've already taken a little bit of paint off there. I've got to be careful of that. But that's, that's not bad. Yeah, I think we can work with this now. So I'm just going to take the rest of the masking off, see if I can tidy up a few of my mistakes and my errors there. And um, I'll let you see it all once this is all off. So with the masking all off, I'm I'm very ha actually very happy with how that's turned out. The contrast between the brighter green and the sort of turquoisey modelled effect and striping and stuff has worked out pretty well. And do you know what? It's not a bad looking raptor so far. Not a bad looking raptor. So the first or the next thing I'm going to be doing is adding a bit of a dry brush. Uh, this is to prep for a bit of an ink step that I'm going to be doing. So the dry brush I'm going to be doing is Praxetti White, the Citadel color. And we're going to be giving it basically the entire model a go over with the Praxetti White just to um, bring up that scaled, scaly detail that it has all over it. So let's see if I can get my brush in a position that I'm happy with it just removing some paint and then it's just going to be a case of just dry brushing it back up and I don't think there's a need to really go mad with the dry brushing in this case I just want it to show off some of the texture on the model a bit more Okay, I think that ought to do it. It looks like a suitably big mess. And the next, uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is another quick airbrush step. And for this, we're going to be using game ink. This is a Vallejo game ink, which is just green. And it's quite a vibrant green. So I've mixed it down or thinned it down about uh, three to one, maybe even four to one. So let's see. how this works out. I'm just going to wait for my airbrush to get a bit of pressure. That should be it. So, let's give it a go. I 
And at this stage, I'm not too worried about overspray going down onto the, the underside colors. I feel like it might just add a little bit to the fade, to the modeling. So for now, I'm going to let it dry. After I let it dry, I'm going to give it a coat of varnish because I really want to try and protect this. This is a, a metal model after all, and I'm noticing that my primer is starting to lift in places. So maybe a uh, rattle can primer would have done better first off before moving on to uh, maybe an airbrush coat of primer. So, and yes, I did wash the, the model down thoroughly as well before I started. So I'm gonna let this dry. I think it's gonna dry with a bit of a sheen to it, but I'm gonna give it a matte varnish anyway and let that cure. And then after that, we can work on starting to uh, base coat in some of our details. So as the ink dried, I realized it was actually drying matte, so I have not put a matte varnish over it yet. So we'll probably leave that to the very end. However, the next thing I'm gonna do is block out a couple of colors. And first off is going to be Wraithbone. Now Wraithbone is going to be going onto all the feathers, so on the top of the head, down the arms. It's also gonna be painted on the inside of the mouth and the teeth as well as the feathers up here on the tail. The next color I'll be putting down is Corvus Black. Now Corvus Black is going to be pretty self-explanatory now because we're going to be painting the claws, just the claws in the Corvus Black. Um, we may also put in Wraithbone into the center of the eyes just to get that process going as well because it'll take a little bit of a color and then a, maybe try and get a pupil put in there too. Um, Overall, I'm not completely satisfied with how the green ink has gone down. What I might do just to add some additional shading is put a green wash over this as well. And possibly another dry brush. I'm not sure. I may wish to just try and ignore uh, or not worry about the, the dry brush that's already down on it too much. We'll see what happens after a green wash has been put down. However, that's neither here nor there. We're going to start just blocking out the colours inside the mouth, the feathers and the claws. So now those two colors are blocked out, we're going to start um, coloring it all in. So we're going to start with the eyes, and the eyes are just getting a little touch of yellow ink, which is again game ink from Vallejo. So I'm just going to get some of that onto my brush, and we're just going to tone it in a little bit, so not too much. Give them an angry-ish sort of yellow tone there. Like that. Now, we're then going to move on to the feathers and the mouth. And for the feathers and mouth, I'm going to be using a contrast paint, just Blood Angels Red. So we'll just shake that up. And we'll start with the mouth. After we do this, we're going to have to let it dry for a while before we can move on. Not worried too much about the teeth right now either, so we're just going to go over the whole lot. I want to catch the, the bottom sort of gums of the teeth as well. But this immediately does give the raptor a heck of a lot of contrast. So much brightness coming out from the, the wraith bone. So now the contrast paint is dry, I'm going to work on the mouth real briefly uh, to just add a bit more depth to it. I'm going to be giving it a little bit of purple ink because Roman keeps telling me that purple and red go together very well. So I figured to make it look a bit more fleshy and just a little less completely covered in blood, I'm going to be using some game ink from Vallejo, which is just their violet. So this is going to require a bit of watering down because their inks are very heavy, they're very intense. So let's see if I can just get a bit more water in the brush there. So it's just to help shade it down a little bit. So let's go for it and see what happens. See if Roman was right. I think he was right, to be honest, though. He's usually right when he tells me about stuff. I would say that'll do the trick for now. We'll let that dry and see how it looks. On to our um, contrast painted areas. We're going to be going over it with Army Painter's uh, Red Tone Wash. 
just to tone it down a little bit and make it ready for highlighting. So with the wash and the ink dry, let's have a look and see what we think. The mouth isn't too bad. I think what I'll do is maybe give it a bit of a gloss varnish and that'll just tidy it up nicely once the, the rest of the model's complete. So I'm going to move on to just hitting the teeth. And the teeth are going to be done with Praxetti White again. So we're just going to take a small brush and just catch the teeth with it. Now I've got to be careful here that I don't um, start putting it onto stuff that I don't want to be white. Well, that isn't too bad. Certainly looks a bit more aggressive now. So I'll wash my brush off real quick. And then the next thing we're going to do is also highlight our red. So the red is going to be done with a little bit of Army Paint or Lava Orange, just to really bring up some interesting sort of brightness to it. And again, it's just going to be a case of taking the same small brush and just removing most of the paint off of it. Not quite a dry brush though. And then what we're going to do is just catch any prominent edges. Gives it sort of a really fiery looking finish. And I think that'll do for our reds. Now we need to decide what colour we're doing next. I had it in my head what I was going to do next. Ah yeah, so on the claws, we're just going to give them a little touch of Dark Reaper just on the upper sides. Just to show that there is something going on there. And we'll give them a very thin black wash as well. So on the claws, just a case of that upper surface, just right there. We're not going to make them too shiny. like that. Now, do we want to try a couple of pupils? I think we'll try some pupils. Where um, <laughs> this probably will not end well, because I know what I'm like with very tiny details. So just making sure that my brush has as thin a point as possible. I'll just draw a line through the middle of the eye, just like that. Oh, that actually worked. Huh. <laughs> that surprisingly worked. This is where it won't. Oh. Okay, we maybe thought about that one a bit too much, but there is some detail there in the eye. It gives them a bit of personality. I like that eye better because it's a lot narrower than the one on this side. <laughs> but anyway. Let's have a looky-loo then. So the other thing I was talking about earlier was putting a green wash over the body again, just to try and... It's a bit too bright for me yet. So we're going to take a little bit of Army Painter Green Tone and we'll just give the model a, a thinnish coat of that uh, just to see what that does for us. So I'm going to take a slightly larger brush here. Dip it in some water. And then we're going to apply a thin coat. And that should finally kill down how bright that dry brush is from earlier. Because I'm really, I, I really did pick the wrong color for that. I will admit that straight away. That was definitely my problem. Well, that is not looking too bad at all. So what I'm going to say now is I'm going to call a final step. And I'm going to uh, return to some contrast paints if I can find the one that I'm looking for. Yep. So I'm going to do a little light wash of Skeleton Horde just on the belly, just underneath. Uh, again, because we have creases and folds and stuff in there that could do with a little bit more definition to them. And contrast paint is pretty decent at adding definition, so... Particularly Skeleton Horde, because it's not a very heavy 
uh, contrast paint either. He says, as it looks like it's been slathered on with a three inch brush. Add a bit of water to my brush there and just work it out. Well, I think that has helped no end at all. That green wash has definitely given us something that looks a bit more predatory and a little heavier looking. So with that said, I'm going to let this all dry. I'm going to paint the base black. I'm going to give it a matte varnish through the airbrush uh, as I have been with most of my videos uh, filming here. And then when we come back, the miniature will be complete and we can just talk about what I've learned and what I think I've done wrong and you guys can let me know in the comments. So the matte varnish is down, the base is painted black, the grey background is up, that means this model is finished. And to be honest with you, yeah, I made a few mistakes in this one. I'm, I'm happy to own that. Uh, there's things I would have done better. Um, probably made the modelling either a bit darker or a bit more contrasty to the rest of the body, just to show it off a bit more. However, I don't mind it being as subtle as it is. Um, the other things, well... I'm still unsure of how I like the ink. I think maybe just a green wash might have just done the trick on its own instead of having to add it later. However, it is helping. I think both are adding uh, to the final effect. That eye is quite derpy. I got a, a, a closer look at it earlier and I thought, yeah, it's a bit too derpy. So maybe focus on the eyes a bit more. Uh, but apart from that, I like the color combination of the red, the, the fiery reddy orange. Uh, feathers on this green body. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I think the mouth turned out really well. That purple ink on top of the, the red contrast paint has helped a lot. And overall, I'm quite happy with this one. So hopefully you guys are too. You can let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.